Riley arrives at her family's grave and tells them she has avenged their deaths. Moises then waits for her to finish talking to the grave before arresting her for murdering multiple bad people. The movie begins when Riley, a known vigilante, takes down a large drug cartel after the murder of her husband and daughter four years ago. She fights a thug inside a car, where she gets the upper hand and takes a knife away from the thug and whips out her gun, thus shooting his head before taking care of the scene. She returns to her van parked in a depressed area where beggars and informal settlers live. Riley enters her van and cleans her wounds with alcohol while drinking. A box of old scout cookies appears as she remembers a flashback of the day before her family's murder. The flashback starts at the parking lot, where Peg confronts her about a scouting issue of their daughters. Peg warns her that she will regret it and leaves after threatening them. Riley and Carly disregard them and rides the car and head toward Chris to let him know to prepare for Carly's birthday celebration. Later that day, Chris gets a phone call from his former colleague, Mickey. He informs Chris about an operation where they plan to steal from another drug cartel for extra income. But Chris refuses to do the job as he wants to be clean for the sake of his family. Meanwhile, Riley goes to the bank to work. As she enters the bank, her boss tells her to be the last substitute for their sick co-worker and closes the bank in the evening. Eventually, Riley returns home after closing the bank. But to her surprise, Carly's friends did not arrive for her birthday party. After asking Chris what happened, she clicks the telephone to open the recorded audio of Peg. She explains that she organized a large gathering for Carly's classmates and parents. Carly gets upset that her friends did not arrive for her birthday celebration. Still, Riley and Chris tell her that they will enjoy the rest of the night at the Christmas carnival, where they will enjoy the rides and eat lots of her favorite foods. That evening, Riley's family is having the best night of their life, eating ice creams and riding all the carnival rides. Meanwhile, a group of thugs observe Chris from afar and call their boss Garcia. He answers while torturing Mickey before decapitating him, who attempted to steal drugs from him with Chris's help. Garcia then orders his group of thugs to follow Chris and kill him. Later, Riley, Chris, and Carly are about to return to their car. The group of thugs fires their guns at them and leaves immediately after finishing the job. Riley then reaches for her family and cries helplessly as her vision diminishes. The cops and ambulance arrive at the scene as Riley is about to pass out. The forensics and police investigate the scene to locate all possible witnesses to help solve the case. Still, no witnesses are available as they are all inside the carnival, away from the parking lot. After some time, Riley wakes up at the hospital, still recovering from her injuries. Stan, a detective that oversees the investigation of the murder of Riley's family. As soon as she wakes up, he tells her that her husband is linked to a possible drug operation and mentions that he declined the offer of being part of it. He immediately shifts the topic and asks her to point out the possible suspects that have been apprehended by the police and assure her that the shooters will be put in jail. The following day, Stan brings Riley to determine the shooters they have previously apprehended. And after remembering all of them, the police bring them to the judge to put them on trial for their crimes. After that, Moises, another detective, talks with Stan and informs him that there is a mole inside their squad that works for Garcia while showing a badge of a police officer. Moises then tells him to stop working on the case as Garcia will be prepared to kill all of them. Days after that, Riley is in a court trial to testify against the shooters. But the lawyer alerts the judge that she is still under medication for her mental health, which may alter her memory and make it hazy for her to perfectly remember the killers. The judge then agrees with his claims that she may accuse the shooters incorrectly. Riley cannot accept that the judge will let the shooters go after all their efforts to bring them to court. Her anger takes over, and she almost hits one of the shooters, but the guards tase her while the shooters laugh at her. The police then hand her to the workers of the psych ward, where they are about to tie her up. Stan arrives to talk to her and escort the ambulance from the inside to ensure that Riley is safe. But as soon as the ambulance is about to leave, she grabs an oxygen tank, hits Stan in the head and runs away from the ambulance and disappears like a ghost. The flashback ends at the carnival, and Stan and Moises recover the three shooters, who reportedly died while hanging upside down from a Ferris wheel. Meanwhile, the FBI informs their agent, Lisa, to investigate the matters of the recent killings of Garcia's thugs. She agrees to investigate the matter with the police and leaves. Following the recent killings, Riley prepares her weapons to seek revenge on the judge, where she previously found out that he is a corrupt judge that accepts bribes from his clients to bring the odds against the opposing side. She arrives at the judge's house and beats him up before tying him down on his chair. He insults him by putting a regular hammer near his judge's hammer before striking his hands with nails. She then ties him up with explosive wires, which it is connected to a cell phone as a trigger for the explosives. Riley says goodbye to the judge before blasting him with explosions. 
The explosion alerts the police and links the recent killings to Riley, as the dead people are all connected to the incident. Meanwhile, in the police meeting room, Lisa shows some footage to prove that Riley is going on a killing spree while being the death anniversary of her family. A few days after killing the judge, Riley observes the festival store, where she suspects Garcia's drug trade is connected. She enters the store by imitating a beggar with a robe before eliminating the guards at the front door. She scans the area for more enemies to eliminate. She spots a room full of Garcia's thugs and locks the door while killing the enemies outside that room. She utilizes her surroundings and uses her shotgun to kill them and separate them to eliminate them one by one. After killing Garcia's thugs, she leaves one enemy named Marvin to tell Garcia himself that she is coming for him. Garcia gets furious that one little woman is hindering his drug transactions while burning his weapons and cutting his warehouses short. He orders his right hand to take care of this and double the security for all the other warehouses. Later on, Garcia orders his thug to plant explosive devices to lure Riley toward the abandoned warehouse of his. Riley bites the bait, but she notices traps and bombs around the warehouse. She rushes towards a nearby sinkhole to escape the upcoming explosion. The thugs detonate the bomb immediately as they spot her running at the warehouse. They both celebrate as they think they have successfully eliminated her from that massive explosion. But Riley emerges from the sewers and steals a nearby car to catch the thugs. Meanwhile, the thugs are driving towards Garcia's house to report that they have successfully killed Riley. But Riley blocks their path, shoots them both, and steals their car while letting the bodies stay in place as bait for Garcia's other thugs to shoot. The car finally arrives at Garcia's house, but his thugs notice that the car is not stopping, thus shooting it. Little did they know, the passengers were dead, and Riley was already shooting the other thugs from behind. Riley lets the car ram the house's front door for a safer entry. She kills the remaining enemies to take down Garcia himself in the kitchen. After her encounter with his thugs with ease, she finally fights with Garcia. But as soon as she is about to shoot him, Garcia's daughter shows up and walks in toward her father. Riley then remembers Carly and hesitates to shoot Garcia in front of his kid. Garcia takes this opportunity to stab Riley at her side multiple times, grabs his daughter, and orders his men to cover the path for them to escape. Riley realizes that her only chance to escape is to roll down the small hill from the window. She jumps just as the other thugs arrive to kill her. After rolling down the small hill, she escapes the grasp of both Garcia's thugs and the upcoming police, that is about to capture them after the massive explosion at the warehouse. Riley then escapes and heads to Peg's house. She punches her face and barges inside to find some patches and medications. She notices that Peg does not have anyone at home and no wedding ring. She then threatens her that she will burn the house if she reports her to the authorities and takes her car before leaving Peg's house. Earlier that evening, Lisa goes to the depressed area where beggars and informal settlers live. She suspects that is where Riley is residing, as the crime rates in the vicinity have been safer for the past few months. She investigates the area and asks a man why the crime rate has drastically decreased. He tells her that, since the angel arrives, people are scared to commit crimes as they will be taken care of while pointing at the angel mural. Lisa noticed that the angel resembled Riley based on her recorded footage of her from the investigation. She then meets with Stan in the area, but she notices that there are no reinforcements with him. Together, they open Riley's van and recover all her weapons as Lisa is about to tip off Garcia to Moises and the other police. Still, Stan immediately shoots her point-blank in the face and reveals that he works for Garcia and has been the mole all this time. He alerts Garcia to bring his thugs to capture and kill Riley on the spot after finding out where she is hiding. Riley arrives at the depressed area and climbs an abandoned building while leaving a bloody track. She faints as her injuries take a heavy toll on her body. Eventually, Garcia arrives with his thugs protecting him and sends his troops all over the corners to avoid any possible escape route for Riley. Meanwhile, at the top of an abandoned building, Riley hears the voice of Carly, which wakes her up. It gives her enough adrenaline to move and defeat a surveying thug of Garcia by pushing a large crate to its head. She escapes and discovers Lisa's dead body in the garbage container. She takes her phone and makes a live broadcast video to the news while showing her location and exposing Stan as a dirty cop. At the police department, Moises notices her live broadcast and orders all his troops to prepare to engage the area while cursing Stan for being a dirty cop and mole. Meanwhile, as Riley is resting at the top of another building, Garcia uses a walkie-talkie threatens to kill a little girl if Riley does not come out and surrender to him. Riley hears it using the walkie-talkie of the dead thug and decides to surrender for the kid's safety. Riley eventually comes out after some time and provokes Garcia by telling him that he fears a single woman and cannot fight without a handicap. Garcia then swings as he approaches and attempts to punch her. Still, he misses every swing as Riley avoids him, using the energy left from the tank. She makes some time before the police arrive. 
he finally lands a hit, thus sending her toward an old shopping cart, where she finds a pistol. The police finally arrive at the scene, and Garcia gets furious as he thinks Stan ratted him out and shoots him point blank. Garcia runs away while leaving his thugs as the police arrest the gang. Riley catches up to Garcia and corners him in a small alley. Moises spots Riley and runs toward her. Garcia threatens Riley that if she shoots her, she will face more time in prison compared to her. Moises arrives with some of his troops just before she shoots him and tries to negotiate with her. But Riley disregards him and shoots Garcia in the head. Moises then shoots her for killing Garcia instead of letting the police arrest him. The movie ends with Riley vanishing from the scene, but, thankfully Moises remembers that Riley will eventually go back to the grave of her family. Riley arrives at her family's grave and tells them she has avenged their deaths. Moises then waits for her to finish talking to the grave before arresting her for murdering multiple bad people. Later, Riley wakes up at the hospital, and the public sees her as a vigilante. Moises hands her a small tool to escape and lets her remove her handcuffs as he respects her efforts to end a large drug cartel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.